I bet you all don't know that there was a pleasure revolution, a sexual revolution started by feminists. And I bet you don't know that I'm sitting next to the original, the first pleasure <laughs> activist that started it all, Betty Dotson. <laughs> oh, really, Dolly? You shouldn't. Really. Just that there was this big burst of, of information going out to women by women for the first time. I mean, we'd written novels and things, but this was, uh, well, we this know. This was a movement. Betty for Dan, and then we Anne had Coat. Anne Coat. The myth of vaginal orgasm. Absolutely, and you slice Masters and Johnson in there in the, at the end of the 60s. And then after Anne, it was like a whole bunch of articles started coming out. And then, you know, I'm so bad with names and, and history. But among them was Cher Height. The Height Report. And before Cher came out, and before a couple of other academics, I was self-publishing my little pamphlet. Liberating <laughs> Masturbation. <laughs> yes, I was. And... In, seven, in, in 1970, my last, art, my last art exhibition had these big six-foot classical nudes masturbating. Media blackout. <laughs> I thought, oh, I got it. I got it. That's the, that's the bottom line. Now we know. So I went on my masturbation crusade. Ah. What was it all about, the pleasure revolution? About women controlling their own bodies. And Having sex and for fun? Determining what we liked and how we wanted to have our orgasms. Taking control of our sex lives and our bodies. I mean, yeah, basically. I think we need to have a second revolution. Oh, we, well, we kicked it off already. Well, you were the first, the original, and this could be like the second wave of the pleasure revolution could be happening now, and I'll sign on, and I'm sure all of you will sign on, She's too. on. She's, oh, you are on. You are so on. Your reputation has been ruined. Yay. <laughs> I mean, really, people didn't want to sit too close to me. Look, you're sitting right next to me. I know. They didn't want to be associated. It was they a, still do. <laughs> it's like the culture in general. Uh, where does sex end up as a rule? It's on the back burner all the time. It's first, you've got, last. first, you've got to you've got to eat. Eat. You've got to feed yourself. You've got to have a roof mm -hmm. over your head. You've got to be able to clothe, and you have to take care of children. So, if you line those all up. Sex, pleasure, an orgasm. The feminists didn't deal with sex because they had so many other priorities. So it's like I say, in our own lives, when you think about it, what goes on the back burner? It's sex. When was the last time you met? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I really haven't had time. You know, I've been working so hard. So what made you make sex one of your top priorities? Like, why? Well, it was my favorite thing. I do. It's incredible. Sex is pretty good. Yes. Why wouldn't you, you know, and I'd been married and I tried to do everything right and none of it worked. None of it worked. And I was... So you failed. So you're like... Oh. I failed miserably. And the only way I was really having consistent orgasms was through masturbation. And I thought, I don't think I'm the only one in the world like this. I think there are a lot of other people like this. So, of course, you had to get a megaphone and share it with I the rest of the world. Forward. <laughs> Here I, I come. I just ran the workshops, which was so much, they were so enjoyable. Being a pleasure activist has been the best part of my life, and I haven't stopped. And I don't know whether you know it or not, but you've been signed on. I've been sucked up. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yourself. So here we go. Dodson and Ross are going to kick off the next pleasure revolution or sexual revolution or whatever you want to call it. And we are worldwide.